Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. We're taking a look today at the new Lenovo Chromebook Duet 11. This one just came out and it continues a long line of value-packed Chrome tablet devices. And for $349 here, you get a nice 11-inch tablet with, of course, a touch display, a keyboard and a trackpad, a very nice stand here that attaches to the back, and a pen. And the performance is actually pretty good for what they're charging here. So we're going to take a closer look at what this Chromebook is all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is on loan from Lenovo. So we're done with this. It goes back to them. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this new Chromebook is all about. Now, the review loaner we got in is something that's being sold at Best Buy, again, for $349. For that price, you get the tablet here along with the keyboard, the kickstand here in the back, and the pen. So all in a very good value here. Now you can take all of this stuff off as well. So if you wanted to use it like a tablet, you can do that. What I'm going to do here real quick, though, is just open up two browser windows so you can see what happens when you go into tablet mode. So while I'm in the computer mode here, we've got two overlapping windows. When you go into tablet mode, it basically turns itself into a tablet where you can only have one window up at a time. Although there is a way you can do a two up here uh, with windows side by side. So you do have a little bit of a different operating mode when you're in this configuration. You can also take the kickstand off the back here and of course the pen can go away as well. The pen will store itself here magnetically on the back, whether you have the kickstand attached or not, which is pretty flexible. The kickstand will also work in portrait mode, so you can have the tablet stand up like so, or like this. So you've got a lot of flexibility here, and then when you attach your keyboard again, it goes back into its desktop mode, and you have your overlapping windows once again. Now, altogether, this weighs just under two and a half pounds, 2.41 to be exact. That's about a kilogram when you've got all the stuff attached to it. With just the tablet, you're looking at a weight of 1.2 pounds or 510 grams, so not all that heavy. Now, inside, this model has 8 gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. It does not, though, have an SD card slot, so you don't have any way of expanding its storage beyond plugging in USB drives. It is powered by a MediaTek Companio 838 processor that is an ARM-based chip. I'm getting about 10 hours, give or take, in battery life on this, which is pretty good and on par with other tablets like this. So it should do a little better than a PC might uh, when you're doing long-duration work away from a power source. The display is also pretty nice on this one. It is 10.95 inches, which is running at a 2K resolution. That's 1900 by 1200. It's got a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, so it is a little bit taller than your standard 16 by 9 display. It's IPS. It runs at 400 nits of brightness, which is about what you'd expect at this price point, maybe a little better. And it only, though, covers about 72% of the NTSC color space. So this is not going to be something I'm going to recommend for artists and professionals. But for a nice, low-cost tablet, I think it looks really really nice for its price point now the keyboard takes a little bit of getting used to at least for me because the keys are on the smaller side but they have a decent amount of spacing between them along with some very deep travel at least for a keyboard of this size so from a tactile perspective it feels nice and once you get used to the smaller keys you'll be typing pretty efficiently on it the trackpad is also pretty good for the size here. It's got a nice firm click to it. It tracks very accurately. All my gestures seem to be working without a lot of difficulty. So for a tiny little keyboard here, it does well. Unfortunately though, it is not backlit. The other issue is that there are no biometrics on this. So you do have to enter a pin code every time you want to get into your Chromebook. The webcam here at the top doesn't support any kind of facial recognition. Speaking of the webcam, though, it does have a manual shutter here on the top of it. It will shoot video at 1080p, and I took a little shot of myself a little bit earlier. It does have some kind of sharpening filter on it that brings out some of the blemishes in your skin a little bit more than you might like, but it does expose nicely there, as you saw, and is more than adequate for conducting video calls and other things. There's also a camera on the back here. This is an 8-megapixel camera. Nothing spectacular. It does shoot video at 1080p, but not great video. But it is better than nothing. And if you wanted to take a quick picture or something for a meeting or whatever, 
you can get away with that. Here's a shot out of the camera as a still. Not much depth of field to it, but the detail, again, is good enough for the types of pictures you might take on a tablet like this one. Now, I was very surprised to see that there's not one, but two USB Type-C ports on this. So you've got one over here and another one over there. Both of these ports are full service. In other words, they can do video, power, and data devices. However, you can only output to one monitor at a time. So I did plug two displays in simultaneously, and I only got video out of one of them but you can have an image on the second display and still use the internal display independently. The marketing material stated that it supported a 4K display, but in my testing, I can only get it up to a 1440p resolution. Either way, it looked pretty good, and it was a nice surprise to see two full-service ports on this device, and you could use it as a desktop when you have that external display plugged in. You also get a headphone microphone jack here, which is always a nice thing to see. And it has stereo audio. You've got a speaker here on the left and another on the right. There is no stereo speakers though in its portrait orientation. So you'll hear one side out of the bottom and the other side out of the top. But when you are in desktop mode here, the audio actually sounds pretty good for a low cost tablet. All right, let's take a look now and see how it performs. We'll start with some basic stuff and work our way up from there. This does have a Wi-Fi 6 radio on board, and we are connected to my Wi-Fi 6 access point. As you can see here, even a multimedia-rich website like this one is spinning up very quickly with no issues that I can see. And this is pretty nice for a little ARM-based processor. So good performance here for doing the basics. The kinds of things that this is designed to do, I think, will be done without much lag. And you've got plenty of RAM here to keep multiple tabs open at the same time. Now, video playback performance from streaming services should be pretty good on here with one caveat that I'll talk about in a minute. I've got my YouTube channel up here with a 1080p 60 frames per second video running. As you saw, you're getting a drop frame every so often here, but nothing that you'll really notice. So all in, its video performance is going to be just fine for YouTube, Netflix, and others at 1080p, even at 60 frames per second. So no issues on the media consumption front. However, if you want to get the highest resolution imagery out of your streaming services, I do suggest you connect to the web-based versions of those. So rather than downloading the Netflix app, go to netflix.com on your web browser. The reason is, is that the Android side of Chrome OS still doesn't support all of the DRM that's required to deliver you a higher resolution image. So when you download the Netflix or Disney Plus or any of the other apps on your device here, you're going to be running them pretty much at standard definition. So the web browser is the best way to enjoy your streaming sites on a Chromebook. And on version 3.0 of the browserbench.org speedometer test, we got a score of 5.56. That puts this machine at about half the performance of the current generation low-powered Intel chips, namely the N100 and the N305. But for what it is, I think it performs just fine. Let's take a look now at its pen performance using the pen that it came with. So I've got my pen out here, and at the bottom of the screen, you've got a little pen icon here that you can do different things with. So for example, I've got my magnifier here uh, that will allow me to zoom in on particular portions of the screen. That might be useful when you're doing presentations as well. I also have a laser pointer, but if you wanted to take some notes here, what we can do is go back down to the menu and select our Create Note option. And what this will do is it'll drop me into a native note-taking application that's built in. And if I just put the pen down here and start writing, as you can see, it ignores my wrist input and I can write to my heart's content. It does have uh, a little bit of latency, but not a lot. So I think it's pretty good for note-taking. The screen's a little on the slippery side, so it may not be great for artists because it doesn't have that paper-like feel to it. But as a note-taking tool, I think it is pretty effective for that purpose. And there's a lot of different applications that you can install that support the pen. One other cool thing about Chrome OS is that they've integrated handwriting recognition into the operating system. So if I go over here to a Google search, for example, and I select the little squiggly, squiggly line right here, I can search just by writing out words like this, and it will generally recognize things, although sometimes it doesn't get it right. So if you just hit the 
backspace there and rewrite, it'll get it back in and going. So it's not always perfect here, as you can see, but uh, the pen is integrated across the OS, and there's probably a note-taking app on the Android side that you might find useful. Speaking of Android, uh, most Chromebooks support Android applications, and this one is no exception. So you'll have the Google Play Store here, where you can find Android apps that you can install on your tablet. And when you're in tablet mode like this, it feels very much like an Android device when you load those applications up, and that includes games as well. So let's take a look at Roblox. So my kids often pop into this level on Roblox. This is Cookie Swirl Sea World. And I was actually surprised how well the tablet performs playing Roblox here. I'm not getting much lag. My game controller works pretty nicely here without a lot of input lag either. And it's pretty good, actually, for Roblox. I'm sure some of the more advanced Roblox levels that we're seeing now might struggle a bit more. But I think a bulk of what your kids might encounter on Roblox here uh, probably will perform just fine with moderation, of course. Now, I was also pleased to see that Minecraft runs quite well on here. Again, this is the Android version, the same that would run on your phone or other Android tablet. And the performance here is great. It really feels nice for a low-cost device here. And in addition to using the game controller connected up over Bluetooth, you can also use touch commands here too. So however your kid wants to play Minecraft or Roblox, I think you'll be in good shape here with very good performance. And I also found game streaming runs just fine thanks to the Wi-Fi 6 on board. Here we are connected up to the Xbox cloud gaming service that's part of Game Pass Ultimate. And everything here seems to be running at a decent frame rate without any glitches or anything else going on. And of course, we've got our Bluetooth controller connected. So all good on the gaming front for the price point. And on the 3D Mark Wildlife Benchmark test, we got a score of 1,727 on the standard version of that test and 511 on the extreme version. That is no match for an Intel-based Chromebook right now, but at least it's holding its own against low-cost Android devices like the On11 Pro we looked at a little earlier. All right, one last thing to take a look at here, and that is how well Linux performs on the Chromebook. You can install Linux apps on just about every Chromebook, including this one. Of course, you have to go into the uh, command line here to install those applications, but once you do, uh, you can jump into those either through the command prompt here, like I'm running Nano, uh, or you can load up graphical user interface applications like LibreOffice that gives you a local office suite that you can run without an internet connection. So right now I'm loading up its spreadsheet, which looks a lot like a Microsoft Office application. It does run a little slower, at least on its initial boot on this hardware, given the limitations. But once it is up and running, it performs quite well here. I can also boot up the word processor as well so you can get a look at how that works. And all the files for this are stored locally like they would be on any other computer. And there is a wealth of open source software that you can pretty easily get installed on the Chromebook and it will run alongside your Chrome browser along with the Android apps as well. So a pretty capable little device here from Lenovo. I've always liked the Duet line, and this one is by far my favorite. It is very inexpensive for what you get here, and I think if you are someone who's looking for an inexpensive tablet and you want the flexibility of being able to run desktop Linux apps, Android apps, and Chrome stuff along with an operating system that's supported, I think you might enjoy playing around with this one. The expiration date on support for Chromebooks now is 10 years from the design of the platform. So this particular one is good until June of 2034. Now that date is set in stone. So if you were to buy this a year or two from now, the date is still 2034. But you will get a decade out of this device if you buy one in the current year here. So all in, a very nice Chromebook here. I am really happy with what they're doing on the Chrome OS side. We've got more interesting Chromebooks to come in the near future, so stay tuned for that. And until next time, this is Lon Sybin. Thanks for watching.